I'm I was born ready. Hello. Yo. A bit loud, a bit peaky. Oh. Yeah, I think that was a bit loud. How's it going? It's good. How's it going? Good, thank you. Good. What did we forget last week? He's George. He's Angus. Ooh. 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 <laughs> right, we're back. Start back for 10. Episode 27. Seven. Um, what are you up to this week then? Can't say nothing because we went out for a drink, and we I'd be did. deeply offended if you'd forgotten that. I haven't forgotten. I just, I think the problem. Ooh, I think the problem is, like, I know I do things, but I don't know. I just never remember to talk about. Do you them. not? Do you not deem them pod worthy? Well, it's it's not a conscious decision not to talk about them. Do you know what I mean? I just they just don't come into my head when I need to think about what I've done. I need to write it down before I come here, and then I know. No, that's know. against the the aura. Oh, I suppose. Not yeah. the aura. Wrong word. The the manifesto. <laughs> we never write things down. <laughs> no, we have nothing. It's always written off down. the cuff. <laughs> <laughs> no, so, no planning. No, uh, yeah. I guess it's probably a good time to re- to recap. We went for good, a drink. We though, have yeah. no planning in our podcast. We Ever. turn up, and I might have chosen a news story before, but George has never known what it was going to be, know. and then we literally have no idea where it's going to go. That's the beauty. And we just eat crisps and eat drink crisps. beer and talk about whatever happens. We do. So yeah, we went for a beer. We went for a beer. So I know what you've been doing this week as well. Yeah. Have I done anything else as well interesting? Been to the rugby today. Oh yeah. But that's not really that out the usual. I uh, went to Trago Mills today. Oh, did you? We well, did. What did you, what did you buy in Trago Mills? Well... I went with the intention to maybe buy some cool stuff, mm. but just wound up buying duct tape and chewing gum. We should probably, people who, we have quite a lot of listeners who won't know what Trago Mills, are, of course. What Trago Mills is. Of course, well which, if you don't know you need to watch Josh Widdicombe's, the well, comedian I don't, I don't Josh know, how do you even spe- yeah he did he, quite he did a, a good job of specifying He did quite a good job was. of explaining what it is on, on Mock the Week. How would you describe what Trago Mills is? Peacocks, Towers... Very cheap. Burnt down once. I would go for theme park. Theme park? That's <laughs> loose. <laughs> Most of the stock stolen off back of lorries. Yeah, definitely that. Um, Acropolis? Yes, there's a garden centre with a scene that looks like the Acropolis. A very small version of the Acropolis. Yeah, sometimes we actually, I actually did this once where... We went, stood there in the Acropolis, took a photo and k- tagged it off with a caption. <laughs> weekend away, or something. weekend away with the lads in <laughs> Greece, and it actually people were beginning to bite on it. It was beginning to. Yeah, I, I think I remember that, and I just remember thinking, well, "That's Trago Mills." Tra- yeah, well, Trago Mills is a bit of a. It's an odd place. Very odd it's place. A very you can odd get place. anything like they have home brand paint and stuff. As they well have as... so much stuff, but they never have the thing you want. Like, I went in there to buy shoelaces. Yeah? As one of the things I wanted to buy. To Timpsons. Yeah, but they're like £12 in Timpsons, and they were like 40p in Trago Mills. So anyway, I went to buy shoelaces, but they had... Because I wanted, like, they're for, they're for smart shoes. You for know? your Work shoes. shoes. For your shoes. Work shoes, you know? And I can't find these kind of shoelaces, the round ones. Can't find them anywhere, the really thin round ones. Anyway, so I went in there looking for them, right? They had them, loads of them. Brown, blue, cream, white, no black. Do you know why? Because the buyers who who run Trago Mills would have gone, Buy the crap really, no one else no, wants. No, do you know what would be a really good idea? We'll get the shoelaces in and they'll go, oh, how much of all this stock? Oh, the, the blue, the brown, the cream and all these. They, they're 19p a pack. But the black one, see, that's 89p, so we don't get as much margin on that. We, we just won't get that one. We just won't stock black. Yeah. That that genuinely would have been the, the that train That is how Trago Mills works. That gives you a real good insight with one product as to how Trago Mill works. Yeah, we did. But it's kind of, there's a lot of our friends as well. When I said theme park, there is actually a small theme park. There, there. actually is a theme park there. Yeah. And it's when, terrible. If people are going to do like a summer job and you're looking for something to do, it's quite good to go man, oh, it's the, great for man that. the summer job. Yeah, awesome perfect. Awesome for that. Get a great suntan. Yes. Our mate Andy went and worked there, and he was working on the go-karts. 
obviously you had to pay a safety briefing. And um, by the time where Andy's employment was reaching a termination, where he knew that he was going to leave and be going back to do going back to do PGC uni, whatever he was doing, I think it was that. Um, he was playing uh, Darude Sandstorm <laughs> as opposed to the safety briefing. I love that track. Everybody loves Darude. Darude. They've, uh, you know, they've, they're, they're building. In, actually, I'm not going to bore everyone. We're going to go. Yeah. They're building. They're building. It's going to Wales. It's things. coming to Wales. It is coming to Wales. Trigger Mills is going to just Wales. Just outside Cardiff, near yes. Treforest, I think it is. You know too much about that again. I only know it because I know some like <coughs> Jazz's um, brother. Jazz's brother lives near there because he goes to uni out there. We got very sidetracked. Sorry. Right, we need to start. Sorry. Okay. So we need a starter. What's our starter for then? We are on time.com. Um, wannabe weatherman has been arrested for starting a wildfire to get Facebook views. What? Um, yeah, an aspiring weatherman what? was arrested in Kentucky this week after intentionally setting a wildfire in order to film it to get more Facebook views. What? Johnny Mullins, 21, was arrested and charged with second-degree arson. Uh, the Associated Press reported. He often posted video segments that he called Weather Outlook. Um, NBC reported that his final video got... How many views? Have a, have a guess. Speculate. 2,000. 2,900 views. Oh, so bad, arguably not worth Same starting a fire. wildfire. Um, it's really too bad because he's not a bad kid. Well, he's he just sounds, misguided. He sounds like an arson That's hole. What, uh, wow. Yeah, you dug that one out from deep, didn't you? <laughs> uh, yeah, he basically, the, the police chief, Jeremy, James Stevens, is saying that he's not a bad kid. But he's just misguided. Misguided, but he was enjoying he set fire to a forest. Yeah, he's not misguided. He's a lunatic. He's insane. There's been lot. There's a load of wildfires at the moment in Tennessee, Kentucky, North Carolina, and Georgia. They're all wanna be weather. And men, they? <laughs> authorities suspect that arson might be in a factor in more than twenty of them. What? It's. But do they mean arson, or do they mean someone lit a bonfire and it got out of control? Well, if there's a wildfire in the town one over from you and you go and then continue to light your bonfire, it's quite ill thought out. Well, if you're in a very dry forest, yeah. Yeah. Is this the difference between first degree and second degree arson? Ah. First degree being a premeditated arson. Well, his second degree... I struggle to think that this hasn't been meditated, actually. No, this has been meditated. This must be... So second degree must be meditated. Here we go, guys. You're going to learn a little bit about the laws in America. Um, first degree murder, an intentional murder that is willful and premeditated with malice after a forethought. Oh. Second degree murder, any intentional murder with malice and forethought but is not premeditated or planned. Oh, okay. So maybe he just, he was in at the forest. It's a spur of the moment thing. And decided to set fire to it. But he always had the intention of malice but didn't plan it out to, with a fine-tooth comb. Is that a thing? No, that's not a thing. <laughs> a fine-tooth comb? Yeah, but you don't plan something with a fine-tooth comb. How ma- how short does a comb have to be before it's a fork? How many prongs for you? Well, prongs only... Uh, forks only have four or five prong Five? Four? Well, if you had a six-prong fork four at that point, they? is it a comb? No, it's just a weird fork. <laughs> I don't... Because the dessert fork has three, doesn't it? Or is that a fish fork? No, a fish fork has three, a dessert has four and a... I pulled up a picture of a six-prong fork here. Yeah, that's stupid. What's the point in that? <laughs> and it looks like an afro comb. It does. So it's therefore, stupid. I can uh, answer my own question now. I've deemed that at six prongs, it borders... It becomes a comb. So, what? That's just confusing. Oh, hang on. Oh, hang on. I've got a, got a diagram here. A three prong fork is a oyster fork. Yes, they became they for different. Um, a four prong fork is a dessert fork. Yeah, a small one. A long four prong fork. Wow, this is difficult. A long four fork. Prong fork. Prong fork is a salad fork, and even and that's quite wide. Mm. And then an even longer but very narrow four prong fork is a fish fork. And then a Bigger, longer still, and wider four-prong fork is a dinner fork. Okay. And a two-prong fork is a fondue fork. 
Yeah, or a um. If you were, if you, if anybody learned anything by me just saying that like that, then I'm very impressed. Because well, <laughs> I everyone, don't have all, a clue. All you've got is prong fork. <laughs> Four prong fork. <laughs> all anyone heard there was burp, burp, burp. Six Jeep, prong fork. Six prong fork. Burp, 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 burp. Yeah, I. There you go, forks. <clears throat> Yeah, that is it. That is interesting, though. I I believe. Why do you reckon forks came about then? Um, don't know. I suppose they make sense because the knife comes about. Obviously, yeah, the knife makes because perfect we obviously sense. ate, with and so hands. does the spoon. The spoon makes perfect sense too. But we obviously ate with nut hands. I suppose the fork would have been to to stabilize a the, later. Um, a the later fork development. must have come after the knife. Oh yeah, definitely agreed. Yeah, we we would have been using knives or equivalent of knives and blades and, bur- and bone and stuff years before spoons and everything. Well, you can't make a spoon without a knife. So there you go. Not really. Can't make an egg without cracking a few omelets. It, it, it's not going to catch <laughs> on, is it? <laughs> you can't make an egg without cracking a few omelets. Oh, God. <laughs> Brilliant. Uh, yeah. But yeah, like, we must have been using just like bits of wood as like a spoon, so we must have slowly like whittled those down to be spoon shaped. Mm. I but reckon... a fork, I reckon, came in later, more like um, I don't know. Once we start, probably once we started making metal utensils for higher, must have been for higher, um, you know, society. Surely, yeah. I reckon it could. It sounds like it could be because why sort would of they have ever needed a, a Tudor fork? thing? You know, like that kind of era. Yeah, maybe banqueting. Yeah. They were still all into the hands, though. Yeah, I know, but maybe forks were used to serve or something? Medieval and Tudor meal times. Yeah, I... Yeah. It is. They so must... have you, have you, are you looking it up there, or? I'm trying to, but with limited success. Well, it's difficult, isn't it? How, what, you can only look it up? Yeah, it's, um... Spoons were... Yeah, you're right here. Spoons were once so valuable that people carried them everywhere and tucked them into their belt. Mm. So you sort of just went around with your you spoon did. in <laughs> case you... You in always case you kept your spoon. ...saw something that needed yeah. spooning. Yeah, just you needed did. a bit of... You could have eat, just eaten a bit of it. Yeah. But... It says here that pitchforks, of course, have been used since the Egyptians. So... So, like, a pitchfork is a known thing. Um, and then in Egypt, they used them as cooking utensils as well. Mm. Like, I suppose you'd stick a bit of meat on it and put it over the, put it over the fire. This is serving utensil. It's been used for, um, and the Romans used them. And then the spork. The spork came along. The personal table fork was most likely invented in Eastern Roman Byzantine Empire. Interesting. Common used by the fourth century. Blah, blah, <coughs> blah, 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 blah. So there you go, Roman. But isn't it interesting how we've chosen to go for, um, <coughs> like, as an attack weapon on the streets? You don't ever hear people like, oh, you got, his, you got, you got taken, he's got six years, six years in pen because he carried a fork. Because he, cause he used his fork. Because <laughs> he used his fork. He's caught, caught carrying around a fork with malicious intent. Yeah. <laughs> it wouldn't have been, isn't it just weird how that, that just comes out? Well, it's because a fork isn't actually that dangerous, because it's only about half an inch long. You stab it into you, it's not going to kill you, is well, it? No, you, what I'm saying is, you could carry big forks. <laughs> like a freaking <laughs> pitchfork or a garden fork. No, no, no. More, you know like how somebody would carry a, 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 four, like a five inch bladed knife? I could what, carry like a five-inch bladed a five-inch fork. Inch fork. <laughs> Why would you? You'd have to custom make it. They don't make those. <laughs> well, no, that's what I'm saying. Isn't it interesting how we've? T- I'm not. Well, rewind. I don't see the need for it, but I think it's interesting that we've settled on the knife as opposed to people choosing other weapons. But it's a it's a logical step though, because it would have been swords originally with a sidearm or a dagger. Yeah, but it'd been better if from the start we just had fork battles and we just went into. <laughs> well, they war- did. Well, you did have people who fought with forks, didn't you? Yeah. Because the gladiators, some gladiators mm. had a fork, like but that when, was wasn't that was that must have been something to do with Poseidon because Poseidon used a. But it wasn't. It's not called a fork. Yeah, is that it? was a. Um, uh, Someone I know a trident. trident. A trident. People trident. would have been listening to that shouting. What the <laughs> yeah, answer was? Yeah, it was a trident. A the, trident. Um, uh, yeah, that's a three prong fork. A three prong The middle fork. one longer is it? Yes, and they've got barbed ends on them. That's like right. Arrowheads. That's right. 
for causing so they use those in battle maximum damage but they're not useful because a sword you can strike down but a fork you have to stab with which is like quite inconvenient yeah I mean it's great when you're like charging but after that it's useless well no then you have to rewind and charge again I like <laughs> rewind it and char- you have to back off and then charge again I like that as combat wow I'm glad that you're not a commander and I'm one of your <laughs> fighters because we'd all be dead <laughs> It's like jousting. <laughs> jousting. Whoever came up with the jousting idea... Jousting is a bit stupid. Was jousting like a malicious thing to begin with that then became the sport, mm. or did the sport become... Dunno. Maybe used in battle. Maybe used in chariot racing in Egypt. Mm. And Rome. Egypt? Rome. Rome. I Rome. think... And Egypt. No, it was in Egypt. Yeah, I think they probably used sort of an equivalent of jousting Pokey. there. Mm. Yeah. I don't know, maybe it, they were used in battle, maybe horsemen used them. Yeah, just a long pole. Yeah, I don't I know. Like th- I like that as an idea don't of a know. weapon. I don't know, I just I quite like the simple weapon. Like the simple... What, like a just a long blade of metal with the sharp long edges? Pole, yeah. <laughs> like I a like, sword. <laughs> and also, it wouldn't even kill someone. If you, like, if you were on the battlefield and you thought about it and somebody rode towards you at 30 mile an hour with a horse and you, you got essentially a scaffold pole went through you... You wouldn't die. You wouldn't die any... You take... You would take a little while to You'd take hours. And also, they couldn't retrieve their weapon. Yeah, no, you'd die for a while. You. It wouldn't kill you. It would. It could, I guess, if it hit your back or something, cause some little spinal injury, organ injury. But you're not just, you're not just like... Wow, this is brutal. If it went in the stomach, you mean? Yeah, it, it would just go fa- through... Yeah, it would just go through organs and stuff. And it would just... Oh. But it wouldn't be cause a you'd big enough... You'd pass out, though. You'd just... You'd pass out. I don't know if you would initially, though, because you'd have so much adrenaline. From the innate the action of I'm fighting. I'm glad we don't live back then. This is like Braveheart stuff you're they talking about They were mad, here. though, weren't they? They were absolutely mental. Well, they just, they, I don't know, they were just fearless. And also, they would do exactly as they were told. You know, like, even up to yeah, the point... Yeah, because they, I suppose they had the belief in their leaders, didn't they? Yeah, but they also know that Paul down the way got gored by one of those long poles. And if I was you, I'd see that, oh, last week when we had that battle with um, the... Unta tribe who came <laughs> the over the Unta tribe the Unta tribe who came over the hill and remember remember when Paul yeah got that pole through it took him fifteen hours to bleed out <laughs> you wouldn't I wouldn't but this way I wouldn't be as I wouldn't be as keen to sign up for the second week of practice would if I would you no because you see it's br- the brutality is just there for anyone know, to I see know, and they brutal, kept doing it? it so if those events were like a one off but they kept that's how they did war. Crazy. Were they just a bit retarded? Were they a bit slow? Well, maybe. Or did they just pitch a lot of honour on the I think that it was, yeah, I think it was honour on death. Um, I suppose it must have been something like that. If you died, you died a hero, you know? Yeah, screaming though. Yeah. I think they just fought for something they believed in. I suppose we just don't have anything like that now. But I then, just don't believe in anything. But if somebody charged into the house with a knife and was like threatening your mum and threatening your dad... Mm, don't bring mum and dad into this. You'd probably be like... You'd probably do anything. Like you'd take it to the chest or whatever. Just Would to, I? Would I though? Would you? No. Or you could just pretend you're not here and call the police. I'd think long and hard before I went charging in. I think I'm that. I'm still that person. I I can say this. I, I don't know. I think in the heat of the moment, you you probably would do something about it. Yeah, I've realised when I've in situations in my life when I have been in heats of moments, my brain has not been where the normal brain would assume that it should be. Mm. It'll be thinking about something but entirely it's fight or inappropriate. Flight. In that situation, it's fight or flight. Yeah, in when I've been in, in a it. fight, when I've been in a fight or flight situation, I have been thinking about something inappropriate or funny. Not inappropriate in that way that he's made you giggle like a girl, in the way that's been uh, inappropriate for the situation I'm in. I saw a news story the other day where this woman and this man were heralded as heroes because they were in their office and um, with their boss, <clears throat> and some ex-employee um, just walked in and stabbed the boss. <coughs> just stabbed him, like, twice. Um, and these two, like, one of them jumped on him and sort of tackled him down, and the other, the woman helped the guy the boss to safety and help treat him and stuff and they were heralded as heroes which is true they know it was very brave they were heroes very brave but it was very the whole situation was very weird because apparently this guy just left and then 12 months later came back and stabbed the boss and there was no animosity and we all quite liked him and all this and i'm thinking well that's total trash he clearly (laughs) didn't 
Clearly, there was something. something. There was something afoot. So anyway, he's do, he's got like he got like twenty six years or something mental. Well, he, that would definitely fall under premeditated. That Twelve it is, months. It is premeditated. Of premeditated intention of murder, isn't it? Anyway, so he he stabbed this guy and that, and then this this other guy like got onto him and like fought him, and he took it to the hand and stuff. And I thought he was in an office. Why didn't he just pick up a freaking a print table yeah. or something and just throw it at the guy or like a chair yeah. or like a monitor or just freaking anything well, you'd, 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 something big and heavy or I'd tool up. hold the chair and ram exactly. into him with it he's only got a knife I tool up what's he gonna do yeah imagine you know what a, don't I go think, for him because he's just gonna stab you if you, you and ran him. into somebody with a swivel base of a chair Exactly, you'd knock. You could knock them out. You'd knock them over. Yeah. You first of all, you'd knock them over, and then you just you'd just sit on them. <laughs> yeah. Find them down. One of those. Sit on them. A sword. star with the casters <laughs> around his chest, and then just sit on it. How did how did he die? His chest caved when I sat on him with a spinny chair. <laughs> but he had a knife. Yeah. <laughs> just some, good Samaritan law. Honest. <laughs> honest. I had good intentions. Hopefully, we will never know how we would react in a situation like that. <clears throat> Well, now I've thought it how I'll definitely charge at someone with a, with a <laughs> spinning <laughs> office chair. <laughs> Whoop, swirly chair. Like you say, if you think about it, though, you've got three, like, three... Within an breach. office, there's so many different things that he could have used. There's so many Absolutely things. Absolutely anything. There's so many things you could use. Just a... A big Frickin medium. <laughs> a big medium. A, big. <laughs> a, a ruler. A big medium. A big medium could do a lot of damage. Yeah, you could. You could stab someone in the eye Stabs, with a big medium. A, emergency tracheotomy. <laughs> Just, well, that's perfect if you've crushed the guy. You've crushed the guy. I'll sit on him on the chair, on the swivel chair. You run and get a big medium. Up and down get the, the ink chair. out. Shove it in his chest. In his, through his throat. Oh, <laughs> Job done. Savage. Yeah. And then, then I don't know. Yeah. That reminds you of that thing, that um, marine thing. Uh, oh, you showed me a video of it. Yeah, it's like five. It's like blasting five knitting needles yeah, 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 through yeah, the yeah. chest. It's, it's, what's it called? It's like the fast something, fast one, fast, fast two, one. fast three. I don't know. Fast, fast one hundred. I think it was fast five. It was like a. How, it's like twenty needles on a thing, and it's you just <laughs> smashed it into them like yeah. an impact wrench and type it, thing. Yeah, and it. And it was for to Brutal. gain, um, like, a, an access to give somebody loads of fluids, loads of something on a battlefield. So you just didn't, like that. So you could go through clothes and essentially Literally get anything, yeah. a perfect, um, v, like, access to give somebody fluids. Yeah. So if they were bleeding out or anything like that. U.S. Marines. Do. Yeah, Marines. Use them. Uh, do they use it? On the battlefield. Just Marines. Probably. Yeah. Just. I doubt, well, I'd, uh... Could it be... No, I think it's just Marines. I don't think it's... I, uh, I don't know. Could be anyone. Could be the just SEALs. Could general, be anyone. General military. Let me look it up. Let me look it up. Look learn how to use it on Hell Week. Hell Week. <laughs> on Hell Week. <laughs> Maybe they do learn how to use it on Hell Week. <laughs> That's what's the know. end of Hell Week. <laughs> That's what they do at the end. That's the final test. That's why They I... use a fast one on you just to see if you can they cope with the pain. <laughs> blast a hole into your chest. Well, if you've, been, if you've been in the office and you've... In the, the office and somebody's come at you with a five-pronged spinning chair... Then you then you'll I be think you've got, you've got the right to uh, fire at them with a big one, <laughs> big medium. Blow a hole through the sternum with a big medium. <laughs> <laughs> what am I going to do? How did he? Well, we tried. We tried to reinflate his lungs manually. Yeah, we actually tried to save him, um, but it ended badly. <laughs> yeah, put an emergency chest drain in with a pen. <laughs> <laughs> Flipping heck! Why? Why do they? Is how weak. How weak's the one to? Is like halfway through the the seals camp, isn't it? Um. Yeah, Navy SEALs they do Hell Week. Um, and the point is to just thin out the the wheat from the chaff. And it's just it's just the idea is obviously designed that it takes pushes you to your absolute limit, absolute physical limit. Yeah, it's supposed to be pretty horrific. There's a good um. There's a good scene of it in a film. Um, GI Jane. GI Jane. Who's in GI Jane? Uh. Demi Moore. He pretends he doesn't know, but he knows instantly. <laughs> I had to remember her name. Yeah, you know, Demi Moore. You instantly know. Somebody gives it to you in, in your I think ear. It's Demi Moore. It's like a shave head job, you know. And she's she's the first female Navy SEAL in the US, obviously. What's the film where they uh, America? No, the one where he falls down a hill a lot. What? The American War film. It's got Mark Wahlberg in it, and he does a lot of falling. Oh, I don't know. Can we can we all clock the time here? 
five to ten, I have defeated George on a film knowledge. What, Mark Wahlberg falling down a hill? Mark Wahlberg. Oh, what? Oh, it came out recently? Yeah, fairly. Oh, I know the one you mean. Um, oh, crap, I've got to try and beat him on his Google ability. Uh, I wanted to see it. Uh, I can't remember. Lone Survivor. Oh, Lone Survivor. Yeah. I wanted to see it, but I think it was a bit naff. At the be- it, oh, it was very naff. Yeah. It, the, the scene, but when I say he fell down the hill a lot, like there's one scene where he's just jumping down a mountain <laughs> and he falls about <laughs> 70 foot onto a spine-breaking rock and just gets up and carries on fighting. It's based on a true story. That bit was not. That okay. was embellished. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm just, I was going to say at the start of the scene when they're choosing out the guys and they're sat there like holding arms with each other yeah. in, and the water's washing over them and all that stuff. I think that might be that is how weak. Yeah, they're all um, they do stuff like the BBC did a series, didn't they? Um, with Freddie Flintoff, the cricketer of Pedro yeah. fame. Yeah, he um, he was the one in the big old you know rab wolf whatever <coughs> rab freaking Jack Wolfskin <laughs> freaking Arcteryx puffer jacket, wandering around while all these people were like soaking wet in the Welsh Sea, like. Oh, nearly grim. nearly dying of pneumonia <laughs> and he's just there like freaking alright guys how are you finding it <laughs> fucking hard Freddy <laughs> fucking hard <laughs> SAS who dares win stuff yeah it, was, yeah it was a bit like that but not I don't think it was as good as that but it was quite good that's been good SAS who dares wins has been good who dares wins was more like like dark British SAS whereas Hell Week was more like they had a a different special forces agent from a different part of the world oh, okay. each week and they kick people out and it started with the Americans and like ended show politics sort of it was like the yeah. show version yeah and it ended with the British and you had like Spetsnaz in there and the, um, the Philippine one whatever they're called I remember the on the SAS one. Who Dares Win some of the stuff they did to them it wasn't the physical challenges that it were was the all, hard no, ones no it's the mental the mental yeah ones. man that's what it's all about it's all about the brain it's all about overcoming they put this what, guy you, in a room stop they put this guy in a room in the dark and made him sit on his, like, essentially sit squatted. Yeah, yeah, stress positions. Stress positions, like, yeah, six hours man. while they I played... Know, it screws you, doesn't while it? While they played dance music, like... Yeah. Doo, 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 for, like, eight hours at it a time. It absolutely wreck you. And they kept they doing were, they it. Were, they, people were quitting and walking out shaking. Like, yeah. Like, head to toe shaking. And the thing is with that, the, with that, in the real SS, well, they don't tell them when the end is, do they? No, no, no. So no, they don't. No, 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 they have no idea. They could be there for a day. They were. Yeah. They were there. For, and when they said, when they interviewed one of the guys who did it, he, the real SAS guy, yeah. on his version when they did it, he did that section for a week. Yeah. Well, he thinks it was a week. When he they has came no back idea and said, how long he has it no, was. He has no idea. It could have been a week. It could have been a day. It could have been four yeah. hours. He has well, they, no afterwards, idea. they said you were there for several days. You, mm. you, that section of the course lasted several days. Yeah. Brutal. I've never been in a position where I need to push myself through anything mentally. Ever? Well... No, because mm. the physical limit, the physical limit of what a human can do is yeah, quite like... Yeah, I suppose like, the, the, the hit in the wall. Yeah, because I, I imagine that a whole load of people sit and watch SAS Who Dares Wins. 50% of them have a gym membership. <laughs> and then when they go to the gym the next day, they're like, they're yes, pumped. come on! Yes, come yes. on! If he can do it, I can do it. Yeah. Yes. 15 minutes on the cross train later, and they're like, nah, cross I train. can't. <laughs> I can't do it, though, can I? I can't. <laughs> uh. and, unless somebody... But then unless somebody stands there and forcibly makes it happen... Or oh, I had that. The course, the course... I've had that once. <laughs> well, once. I was, on once. Holi- I was on holiday. Chilled holiday. Yeah, break. chilled holiday it was. I met this guy who was in the Navy... Yeah, don't worry. It's not. It's not yeah. going where you think so it's going. So, how old are you? <laughs> uh oh, probably pff, don't know. Fourteen. So, fourteen-year-old boy. <laughs> oh, it's making it just sound worse, it's isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's not like that. Yeah. Um. So, I met, so he obviously went to the gym like every day because he was in the navy. Uh, we went with him once, uh, and we went on the treadmill, and oh, he was just it was impossible, and he was like, "Go faster." And I was like, I can't do it. He's like, run! Fucking run! And I'm just like, that. Ah! Who does that to a 14-year-old well, on holiday? Well, I know. I was a little bit peed off. But yeah, it, was, it was a good laugh. At the time. Afterwards. <laughs> it was it's definitely not a, not a laugh afterwards. That's when it, the suffering hurts most. He was all right, though. He was a cool guy. Will. How have you? How do you know his Will. name? Well, I remember him. He, he's, he was in the Navy. And he became a photographer in the Navy. A very good one, too. What's his name? 
Will. Was it? Was his Haig. Will Haig. H a i g h. I'm googling this. Not William Haig. <laughs> no, I, you went on holiday with William Haig. <laughs> yeah, I did not go on holiday with William Haig. You did. The leader of the House of Commons <laughs> passed or whatever. He no, was I didn't. No, this guy's a Navy photographer. He's and as I say, he's pretty good. You'd definitely find me. He just comes up saying he's using Coronation Street. He was in Coronation Street. Yeah, he was. Hang about. Yeah, he was in... <laughs> Hang about. This, the plot thickens. The plot thickens. This is now the second case <laughs> Where of I've you going away actor. on holiday and yeah, meeting he, child he was, actors. He, he was young, yeah. So when we can in, add... When he was in... So we can add this guy in Corey to Bernard and, off and of Bernard's was, watch. He was also in um, a Peter Kay comedy thing as well. I think, he, I think he told him to fuck off or something. Something like that. <laughs> the, it was an ice cream thing. He, anyway. Oh, was he in he Phoenix like, Nights? Uh, I don't know. It wasn't Phoenix Nights. No, because it was. It was Phoenix Nights. No, no, no. no. Uh, oh, what was it called? It was like that Peter K thing or something. Yeah, Peter K. And but no, it the is. character might have been from Phoenix Nights. And the character was in, yeah. And he might and he's got the two ice cream men. Yeah. And they're rolling around on each other's patch. And it has that bizarre scene where he's smearing himself in all of the, the yeah, sauce. Yeah, it, it was that character, but not that scene. And there's this point where he gives him a... A ice cream and he says something like about sauce and he gives him sauce and he tells him to fuck off I can't remember <laughs> something that, like that yeah it was that but yeah he was in that and he was in Coronation Street and then he joined the Navy as you do and then he shouted at you to run faster on a treadmill <laughs> yeah he did yeah <laughs> on your holiday uh, yeah now he's a photographer which is a bizarre holiday you, uh, as I say you'd find him if you googled him I have oh really yeah show me yeah there you go that's him confirmed it was the man Will Haig and there's also a picture on the same line as Willie of William Hague. <laughs> uh, I think it's spelled differently. Isn't it? it is, yeah. Hagu. <coughs> yeah, where this is William Hague off of UK politics. UK politics. UK let's politics not. has been a mess. Politics let's has been a not. mess. Let's just let's just we're, we're <coughs> everybody's dose of not politics. Let's stick with that. Apart from a notch. Apart from, <laughs> there's only one group of politics that we that we believe and buy into in this world. And that is, this might be re- hopefully not really loud. How do I do this? Oh, that's what she did. And watch. And watch. We're back with the the new jingle. Yep. <coughs> for this week's edition. I just oh, I was I was so hopeful. I went onto my my sources. Yep. I was I was just looking for the current news. Ketchup or mayonnaise this week? What do you mean? What's your sources? You're, you're literally so awful. Um, I'm gonna be a great dad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you will. The... Come on, then. What we got? What's he said? He has been photographed uh, studying a map <coughs> of disputed South Korean island with military top brass. Mm. So we let's take from that kind of attack. Pro- probably. Um, he has all. There's also speculation of will he meet with the president elect. Ooh. But that I mean that was also going to come. And Ooh. then now we're on to the more the stuff that we we like. Um, Kim Jong Un has destroyed a um, a model village, a multi million pound, a multi million dollar model village, masterminded by his despicable human scum uncle that he has had executed. Oh yeah, it was a five hundred acre model village. What? So it was a, it was the model was over five hundred acres. That's ridiculous. And it was very big. Well, and yeah, it had about five hundred acres. And it had things like the the Arc, de, Arc of Triumph replica. And it had um, re- like small replicas of that's unbelievable world monuments. And he destroyed and it, and he's just had it flattened. That's sad. This that's this week, this week alone. Damn you, un. Yeah, he, he's um. That's what his uncle's saying. He's no, he's not because he probably got shot the by the. He probably was the one who was shot by the air gun, the anti <laughs> aircraft <laughs> gun. Aircraft gun. I think he was. Yeah. Um. At least it's instant. He. He's going to he's going to send the president elect a message. Mm. He's vowed. Facebook. He's vowed that. No, he Snapchat. won't. Send him a snap. Send him a snap. Yeah, <laughs> the dog filter on. <laughs> Yo, Trump. Yo, <laughs> bet they'll get a streak going. 
They'll have one. They'll have like a five day fire streak. Great. And Trump. Um, it's been all. Is that about it? It's it's very quiet week by his standards. Oh, oh no no no! Hang about. He has boasted that he's drunk ten bottles of um, Bordeaux wine what, in, in one, one evening. Yeah, ten bottles of Bordeaux wine. I'm pretty sure that would kill anybody. And here he is, um, once again pictured in a farm. <laughs> his weekly farm visit. Yeah, to XQ47. XQ47. No, it's not, it's not called that. So <laughs> it, it might as well be. <laughs> um, yeah, so oh, he's... Oh, we love him. Oh, he said that he scaled the 9,000 foot high, the, the mountain, wearing just, o- wearing just an overcoat and leather dress shoes. Wearing his shoes. Mm, his shoes. Do you reckon he had, um, do you reckon he can get a hold of the laces? Yeah, I'm sure he can get laces if he wants them. In the right colours. Yeah. So, so all, by all standards... I've well, nothing terrible then. No, not a, not a bad week for Un, really. Good. Good. Yeah. Um, wow, well, there we go. Yeah, there, there we do. Do you know what, George? There we do go. There we do go. That concludes the personal messages. We continue with music. <coughs> <coughs> right. What beer do we have tonight? Oh, my. We had. Can you remember? Marsden's Indian Pale Ale. Marsden's, yeah. I've bloody, almost finished it. I've got bloody lunch. good as well. I recommend it. And the crisp front, we were on... Tyrrell's this week. Tyrrell's Salt and Vinegar. Cider, yeah, cider vinegar and salt. Crisp support, the beer is really good. Really, really good. Yeah, like easy drinking. Really easy drinking, but also a dangerous 5.7 or something. 5.7, yeah. Which for an IPA, I think it's quite high. Yeah, this this would punch. And this is happily, this is a, considering it's not like a light lager, not like an endless, if this was on in a pub, you could happily you have five pints of easily, it in an Because there's no gas, there's nothing to fill you. This is a dangerous light, beer. A tasty, dangerous, dangerous beer. Slightly chilled, it's beautiful. This is a very high scoring. Yeah, it's up there. This, this I, I'm going to say. It's the best one we've had. This is one of my favourites. Well, that's good. Mm, this this has been Asda. This since we've we've moved to um, going for some some IPAs at the moment. Yeah, we're trying because because we used to get them from Co-op up the road. Mm. Co-op we've, just has a very limited selection. We've run out now because we've used them all. We've literally had everything, um, and so I go to Asda every now and then. So I thought pick up some beers yeah, from Asda. Sometimes I pick up weird stuff, and you pick up like Brewdog. And yeah, but I just keep Brewdog in now. Um, that's my because I don't drink a lot. I don't drink a lot, to be honest. So when I've decided yeah. that when I am going to drink, I'll drink something I actually really like. Yeah, so I'll really just good. keep in some. Well, now you know. You can get some Marston's IPA. Now you know. So once again, the more you know, we will go back. That concludes the personal messages. We continue with music. This track's actually called "You Know," so that was you weird. Know. A weird spin. <coughs> He's been Angus. He's been George. You don't jump the gun. I love jumping the gun. <laughs> we started at Wannabe Weatherman getting arrested for starting oh wildfires. Oh my god, yeah. That I always forget like long... where we start. <laughs> yeah, that felt like a long time ago. I can't even remember how we where we went from this. <laughs> we went everywhere. A wildfire. We wound up on that on knives and forks. Forks! We went forks, six wow. prong fork to be a comb, assaulting people with office chairs. Yeah. Tracheoptomies or not tracheoptomies, vena, venal, venal, venous access. The fast one. Devices. Look up that video, by the way, on YouTube. It's called like U.S. Marine Fast One or not something. Not for the faint it's, of heart. Oh my god, it's savage. Then we rounded up at me meeting another childhood, meeting a child actor, child actor. who beasted you on a treadmill. On a treadmill. Yeah, he was in the navy. Yes, Will Hake. Right, that was a journey. That was great. Thanks, guys. Hell of a journey. Hell of a journey. Hellish. 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 So, yeah, that's Follow us on us. Twitter. Follow us on Twitter at Star for 10 pod We're on Facebook. You can listen. If you're not happy where you're listening to us, you can probably find us somewhere else. We're everywhere. If I were you, I'd recommend iTunes if you're on the iPod, Apple, Steve Jobs network. Or, if not, probably Acast is your best bet if you're an Android person. Or Spreaker. Or the Spreaker app's pretty good, and that's where they host us. They're right. We're also on YouTube as well. But who's going to sit there with a YouTube video? No one. Because it's just a picture of us. It's annoying. Don't do that. Anyway. Anyway. Cheers.
Cheers, Zen. Goodbye. Look at the tov. <laughs> A look at the tov. <laughs>